Hello FX fans and welcome back to another episode of Flight Deck. My name's Nathan and I'll be your captain on this journey. Let's see what's coming up in this month's episode. We take a look at two great vintage classic kits, the De Havilland Beaver and the Westland Whirlwind Helicopter. We take a look at the brand new tool Gloucester Meteor F8 and we take a look at the three brand new starter set cars. We've got a lot to get to this month so let's get straight into it. I'm Nathan, we're FX and this is Flight Deck. First introduced into the range in 1977, the DHC Beaver is one of the most rugged aircraft ever built. The DHC Beaver was designed to operate in the vast and often inhospitable expanses of the Canadian North, and was able to fly into areas where other aircraft simply could not go. With the ability to operate using wheels, skis or floats, the Beaver possessed outstanding stole capabilities, and was specifically designed around the requirements of bush pilots working in these challenging conditions. Also described in many aviation sources as the safest aircraft ever built, the Beaver was also used by many air arms across the world, including Britain's Army Air Corps who operated 46 of these magnificent aircraft. They were used to great effect as reconnaissance and intelligent gathering aircraft at Northern Ireland during the 1970s and 80s. As helicopter technology continued to advance following the end of the Second World War, the operational flexibility offered by rotary powered aircraft resulted in a race to develop a machine with the power and range to carry both troops and supplies efficiently. The breakthrough came with the introduction of the US Sikorsky H-19 Chickasaw, an aircraft which was the envy of the world, with the British military being particularly keen admirers. Having successfully evaluated a number of aircraft, a license agreement was signed to allow Westland aircraft based at Yeovil to produce the helicopter for British service. Named the Whirlwind, the first British build prototype flew in August 1953, the type going on to enter Royal Navy service in July 1954. Early next month, the Jaguar E-Type starter set will hit your modelling bench. A 1960s icon, the outstanding Jaguar E-Type is the perfect combination of a powerful sports car and a competitively priced luxury vehicle. This starter set portrays the Series 1 model produced between 1961 and 1967. This striking model claims a top speed of 150 miles per hour, thanks to taking its racing DNA from the Le Mans winning Jaguar D-Type. Available as a 140 third scale set, the breathtaking Jaguar E-Type starter set is the perfect gift for beginners. The Jaguar is complemented by our two other 140 third scale starter set cars, the Bagani Huayra and the Bugatti Chiron. We interviewed the designer of the starter set cars, Matt. Here's a clip from that video. So I was the product designer that worked on the new uh, 1 to 40 third car sets. Um, so that include, included finding the, the shapes and then breaking that down into the individual parts that are molded in the kit. It was a really nice project to be involved in because it's, it's because it's specifically aimed at beginners. It was sort of looking at projects with a sort of fresh set of eyes, finding ways to make the kits easier to build, but at the same time making something that appeals to more experienced modelers that might be returning to the hobby. The full video is not out yet and will come out in the future. To stay notified when the video comes out, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. As the world watched in awe as the first jet-powered aircraft appeared in the skies over Europe towards the end of World War II, capable of attaining speeds of over 100 miles per hour faster than the latest piston engine fighters, it is interesting to note that the development work on jet propulsion actually started in the 1930s, with engineers in both Britain and Germany searching for the next generation of engine power. Indeed, the first flight of a turbojet-powered aircraft actually took place just days before the outbreak of the Second World War. However, conflict would necessitate the production of thousands of aircraft powered by existing piston technology, so jet-powered advancements proved to be relatively slow. Undergoing almost constant development, the early marks of Meteor were all based around the first aircraft to enter service. However, the service arrival of the F-8 variant in 1950 saw the Meteor maturing into a truly exceptional early jet, one which would not only see service with the RAF, but also with several other air arms across the world. A 
Are you a member of the Airfix Club? We're on the hunt for your Airfix builds to feature in the exclusive annual wall calendar. If you'd like to be featured, send your images to marketing at airfix.com. To become a member of the Airfix Club, head over to airfix.com forward slash club. Here are some of our favourite images so far. This month on Sprue Talk, Graphics Illustrator Richard and Airfix Senior Product Designer Chris discuss designing instructions. Led by Airfix Head of Brand Dale. Find out more on our latest Sprue Talk. Available to watch or stream now on YouTube and Spotify. Here's a clip from the latest episode. For so long, those starter sets were not the ideal experience. <laughs> and so it was like a part of a whole thing we really wanted to improve and, and the Spitfire and, and the um, Hawk. Uh, the, the Hawk, yeah, the Red Arrows were yeah. some of the first and we knew that the plastic had to be like, you know, a lovely thing to put together and try to have the clears in some way clip on so you don't have to uh, do all that. So we've got the plastic, but actually it's the whole experience and the instructions are so vital yeah. at that point. And as you say, like there's things that you might take for granted, like how much glue to use. Mm. Um, but actually if this is your first kit, you might not have any idea and you might use no. way too much and the whole thing turns into a, like mm. a blob of mm. plastic. So yeah. having that sort of information is, yeah. is really interesting to think through, ah, what would actually, let's, let's pretend I've never seen a plastic kit before ever. Mm. And, and but the, same, the, the challenge is then you could have so much information and the thing is unreadable. Mm. And so that's the that's skill. Right. I've got some instructions here, but I'm not sure if it's clear for you to show on the camera. Yeah, I think if you, if or... you hold it up, we're, um, we get a PDF and we can sort of yeah, we'll show do some that PDFs. Edit. You can probably see on page two there the um, the sprues down there, quite nicely highlighting. I'll just take that page away. Page three where we start. Okay, so we've got a little note up the top there. Practice assembling your parts before you glue. And as you can see in step one, we've got the sprue we're using in step one, highlighting the couple of parts we're sticking together there. As we move on um, through the instructions. I don't know where you can see that. Yeah, this is the way it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're deleting the parts we've already stuck together from the sprue as we talk about the sprues through the instructions. One thing that I... To watch the episode in full, click on the link in the description below. Finally, we take a look at your kits. Our first rigging attempt, Martin has recreated the Gloucester Gladiator in pre-war silver livery, and a beautiful job it is too. This next kit is weathered to perfection. The Autocar U71442, 4x4 tractor unit and F1 fuel trailer recreated by Avio Tank. Stunning work. Here we have one of the first built 135th scale Austin KTY ambulances we've seen. And what a cracking job it is. Great to see you, Greg. Amazing work. Tony, you've performed your modelling magic on this one. Superb work. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in this month's episode of Flight Deck. Please do let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see in future episodes of Flight Deck. And as always, please like and subscribe. Nathan. Over and out.